Hey, mayday to you. Back out here in the shop. Doing a little bit of uh, rigging my poles to get ready. You know, it's been tough, real tough the last couple weeks. Couple, you know, I would say all through July, half of April or half of August. Um, my golly. Anyway, just looking at uh, going back to my old reliable when I really first started was having a, a skirted jig with a creature bait or a, you know, something that matches it. But this skirted jig right here, that color, the glitter of that green and gold is absolutely incredible, man. And uh, it was like a fish magnet. And I've gotten away from using it, and I don't know why. I've been worm fishing so much. And I'm thinking now, you know, what do I need to worm fish for? Let's take a look at my setup here. So you can see right here, just a, you know, a paddle tail minnow on a, on a jig head. Then a creature bait on a skirted jig here, which is something that I had a bite on. I hadn't thrown this all year. I threw it out of that wood and actually, uh, you know, got a bite on it. Lost the fish, actually. I had him, but he got off. Then the old uh, shaky head. I went, I, I switched over to this style right there, the bullet, and it seems to work out okay. And I put on a half ounce fire tiger jig. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Castmaster series, but Castmaster makes jigs like that. And I don't know if that's Castmaster or not. No, it doesn't look like it. But anyway, um, let's take a look here. Is that Castmaster? Looks like something different than Castmaster. Anyway, Fire Tiger jig. It's nice to uh, let fall, kind of jerk it off the bottom and then let it flutter down. Flutter jig, I guess you could call it. Weighted, it's about a half ounce. Then the old reliable that I hardly ever use, but I think in this time of year, this uh, wacky rig might be something to uh, consider. So you guys don't ever get to see kind of this side of the boat looking back. But I aim to tell you, I watched uh, Bass Fishing Headquarters, Bass Fishing H HQ, uh, that guy's uh, YouTube channel. And man, he was pulling bass out of Pimatuma, uh, the lake up on the border of Ohio and uh, Pennsylvania. Man, this guy was just pulling them in left and right. Two four-pounders. He was pulling, he pulled every one of them out of uh, the lily pads. I mean, just throwing in the lily pads with uh, a creature bait. He was using a frog and he was getting hit on the frog, but he wasn't getting anything. So he switched over every now and then he would throw the frog. And then if he had a smack at it, he would throw back in there with a creature bait. He was getting crushed. He was nailing them. Unfortunately, lakes around here, they don't have too many uh, lily pads. It'd be nice if we had a nice uh, lake with, you know, a cove that was full of lily pads and a little, uh, you know, anywhere from two to six foot of water. That would be, that'd be money. But anyway, just wanted to bring you this little update and let you know. I was going to go out today. Uh, this morning, I didn't sleep that great, so I was like, you know, I'm just going to hang out today. Maybe I'll go out tomorrow morning. The weather, phenomenal, phenomenal. And I'll guarantee you that the lake, the water has dropped maybe a, a degree or two, which makes a difference. Uh, the bass start getting ready. They start thinking, you know, winter and fall is coming, and we've got to start so stocking up on minnows and anything we can eat. So... I think back at Denny's Cove on Leesville, that might be the ticket to try to pick up some, I don't know, pick up pick up some good bass. We'll have to see. We'll see tomorrow. Hopefully I can get out there tomorrow on Monday. But anyway, just wanted to bring you this update by the folks of TD Mayday. We've been around for years. Anyway, 
Hey guys, thanks a lot for subscribing and leaving comments. I answer all my comments. I know you guys uh, like to see fishing and cooking and everything like that. Um, I've got my sermons on there, but uh, anyway, you know, keep up the good work. Keep on watching. There's plenty of room for those uh, members that are just watching and not subscribing, or not members, but looky loos, I guess they'll call them. Anyway, till next time, mayday. It's out of here. Now the reels we'll be using, pretty much your standard bait caster. I think we've got six of them here. Yeah, six of them. I really like this one. I picked that up off of Ally Express for 15 bucks and that thing, you can throw it across the lake. It's been a good little uh, bait caster for $15. Here's an Abu Garcia that I picked up and uh, got that I think for 50 or 60 bucks. Then the old reliable cast king, uh, I think that's, what is that? That's the Valiant Eagle. Valiant Eagle. And uh, here's one. I think this is the first bait caster I ever got, a Bill Dance. I bought it off of eBay for 15 bucks. And it seems to, seems to work good. And uh, here's another one I got off of Ally Express for 15 bucks. That thing, hmm. Catch us fish. And here's one that's a piece of junk that I spent $119 on Cast King, and it's just garbage. It's the Speed Demon. It replaced the one I, if you watch the video where I lost the one, it flew off my pole and went into the water and uh, down into the lake. Well, I replaced it with that one thinking it was gonna be as good. All as it was was a more expensive and junkier. Well, it was, it's junk, but um, in my opinion, well, I've used it and the thing skips, you know, the bail won't click over and things like that. And it's, it's been doing that almost, I don't know, since six months into having it, it started doing that. And I was like, you gotta be kidding me. So I told Cass King about it and uh, I don't even remember the excuse they gave me, but I wasn't too happy with it. And the thing is, I've got, you know, I, I've I've talked about their uh, equipment all the time and good, you know. So I figured, heck, they're, uh, they'll replace it or they'll have me, you know, send it in or do something. I don't know what the heck they uh, asked me to do. I was just frustrated with it. It's garbage. But anyway, no more negatives. We don't need that around here. <laughs> Get rid of those negatives. Anyway. Uh, that's about it for fishing reels. The rods, the rods are your standard Berkeley cherry wood that you can pick up. I don't know how much they were. I think they were 20 bucks and I like them. All my rods, except for one, this one right here, all my rods are, or not that one, this one, I believe. Yeah, that one right there. Um, all my rods are basic. This rod right here, um, it's a Berkeley shock rod. And I bought, I bought it and I noticed right after I got it, some of the uh, enamel in the eye, eyelets like that one right there came out. So I wrote, I emailed Berkeley and Berkeley said, take some pictures of it. And next thing you know, they sent me, they sent me, um, another shock rod. And I told them not to send the one that's garbage with the plastic on it. The one that, uh, eventually led to my favorite reel going overboard and down on the bottom of the lake. And which by the way, there, there's no metal on it to magnet it, get it with a magnet and bring it out. You have to treble hook it and uh, get it to come out, get it, you know, get it back. But the thing is, is they sent me that one free of charge. They said, no problem, we'll send you a new one. But I did, I specified, don't send me the ones that are plastic, uh, you know, clear plastic and stuff. And they did anyway, and it didn't, you know, they stripped out and don't tighten down that great. And next thing you know, you're casting your, your reels in the lake, taking a swim. But, oh well, it happens. It happens.
And I really hate to say, let's get another one after that, but because that costs money. I'd rather say, let's get another one. Get another fish. Anyway, that's what we need to do.